Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. We are so happy to see you again on the, on our webcast. Uh, and uh, if you're new here, have a look at our previous recording. I think there are something to interest everybody. I'm Chiara Bersano. I'm here with Sherry. And we are very happy to have here with us today as our guest of the month, Josh Greenbaum. Josh, would you like to say a few words about yourself, to introduce yourself? Yeah, first of all, it's great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. It's good to see you both. Um, so my background, I've been in the enterprise software space for 30 plus years. Um, I was a journalist before that, but uh, have been following all things enterprise since since some somewhere in the 80s anyway we won't give an exact date but i i'm particularly been following the you know the large scale enterprise software companies uh for quite a while sap is one of them but but certainly you know i was there when people soft was trying to revolutionize hr in particular um oracle all those good things so i've been i've been following this this world for a while my my specialty is more is that i'm more of a generalist so i'm not i, I always say if you want you know you two particularly know that you know the the details about HR and 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 HR software much much more than much better than I do but I, I look at a, at sort of this it's a cross discipline there is you know as as we talked about I think when we were, we were sort of setting up for this you know HR is, is the discipline that touches everything and I'm the guy who looks at everything and says you know there's no such thing as a supply chain or ERP or finance without people so everywhere hey, we, Josh. we get, <laughs> so no, but I, and I really mean it. I'm not just flattering the two of you, but it's, this is this is a place where the rubber hits the road, where all the technology and process really comes down to, it's it's a people thing, and it's a and everybody at, at the is simultaneously a customer and an employee, and a and 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 working and buying and consuming and servicing, and we all live in this 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 very, very complex world. And sometimes, I'll give my little pitch ahead of time. Sometimes we, we really set this, our vision too narrowly. We look at this one silo and we don't see the big picture. I try to see the big picture. That means I drown in big pictures all day long. But, um, oh. but I think it's so, someone's gotta take it. So that's, hope that's a good introduction. I think you're preaching to the to the core here, but, and both of us completely. That's something I repeat to most customers and most people who are willing to listen to me at some point, I'll say something, you know, HR is at the center of the enterprise. It's the only function that touches every employee. So if you want to start a really transformative approach, it could make sense to start with HR because you can push that much further. Or at least How consider can, that as part of your overall platform because nobody gets anything done without people. I think something, yes. something that has hurt us possibly that uh, for a period of time, most SAP customers were putting HR in a separate track completely for privacy reason or for security reasons. And that may have hurt us in putting everything together. But today is... Uh, it's not done anymore today. It's actually the goal to get everything together. Josh, how can we start extending those processes in a way that uh, go really end to end? How can we convince people that we're really at the center of the problem? Well, I, I think actually, and let me maybe I'll maybe I'll, I'll modify that. We're not at. No one's at the center. Everyone's part of this complex interaction of, of processes, and I think that's the real. The real issue is that what we desperately need is to cross pollinate all of these silos. And I, you know, I have this this sort of pitch I give about the unholy quadrangle. We, you know, we tend to, as an enterprise software vendor community, they, we build product silos. Then we go out and sell that silo. Of course, because we're that motion is so so dramatic and so powerful, the 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 companies, the customers consume it in a silo. They build the internal silo and then. To, you know, the circle comes around because then the analyst community like me, then we analyze it as a silo. So to me, it, it really needs to start with cross pollinization. And this is really, really hard. So even a show like, you know, we, we, Sapphire was a couple of weeks ago. That's a, a good opportunity perhaps to have that cross pollinization, to have those, those different constituents standing together. Still not happening. I would add that, you know, HR, again, every, every, every employee is a customer. Every customer is employed. Everybody lives at the at both at both endpoints of a supply chain or a service chain. We need to blend all of this together, and that to me is the real. That's my mission lately is to kind of break these silos down because they they inhibit our ability to look at 
at the world as, as a real end-to-end -end process. Totally yeah. agree. Yeah, it's a complex process because I would have thought originally when I started working in this domain, uh, we were talking mostly with IT. And in the end, it was the same IT who was talking to HR, finance, procurement. And you would have thought they would have looked at uh, something more organ in a more organized way because it would have made their work easier, right? And it didn't happen. Today we start talking to the function. We're really addressing the topic with uh, HR. We and and they're even less motivated in finding something that is an equalizer. Well, I think the challenge is, and Josh, I'd be interested in your perspective on this, is that HR is always seen as a cost and other areas of IT, they're building something to get hard sales in the company, right? And push product out the door. Um, but again, you can't do that without people. Right. It's this very narrow view that, that you know, I mean, this, and this is, comes out of, you know, quote unquote, modern management theory, you know, in, in cost centers, you know, was something that was built up in the last 20, 30 years. Everything has to have a justification on the bottom and top line. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't mesh perfectly, and I hate to say that we can look at sort of the GE way of managing and we, mm -hmm. which has been discredited to a large extent. Managing to the bottom line is a very, very bad idea. Um, and I think it's produced a lot of very, very bad thinking uh, because absolutely right. I mean, I, you cannot separate these processes at all. You, you know, in fact, I think to a certain extent, you know, we have this thing, artificial thing called payroll that's sitting there as its own entity. It's complex. It has, uh, it's infinitely complex. Yes. But at the end of the day, the number I, I, I um, you know, over here in San Francisco land, we have this big problem with uh, with the large HR system that was just just went belly up and it died died on the the hill of payroll, which is where they all go to die. Well, what happens when you don't pay your employees? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Boom, right. Everything, you know. Um, and and in fact, every experience we have today. So you know, I just flew back and forth cross country. I had a I had a lot of complications with my my flights, it's it's a complicated time to travel. At every point, I was trying to interact with a person. And that person is an employee, is, you know, usually in a call center or sitting behind a desk. That individual themselves are are incredibly stressed, not by just by the atmosphere of the last three years of utter chaos, but the fact that we are in a, living in a very complex world. Travel is extremely complex. It has a million, million variables, and these poor individuals are the are the you know the front line standing in front of this 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 you know standing in front of this chaos of passengers coming towards them and behind them supposedly supporting them is a system that is itself utterly chaotic as well. And how do you know how do you fix that? You you can't just say, well, we're gonna we're gonna put a great HR system in there. It's gotta be an end to end process. It doesn't work otherwise. Yeah, I think you have a great example, really, because it's uh, it's a it's a struggle nowadays to travel, and the systems that support. And here, I'm not talking only HR. The systems at large that support the travel. We all we all dealt with the um, calling centers, with the changing of the tickets, where you wait two hours to have to talk with, and every time you call, they give you possibility to access and they tell you for any question please go on our website you go right. on their website and you cannot do anything and they keep asking you the same question you try to talk to a person and it takes hours and i can only think how frustrating all that must be from the for the internal person who i'm sure faces the same hurdle there are some newer conversations about the advantages of being more of a generalist in a very specialized world and i think that's what you're touching on josh trying to um but it, you know it's 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 but it's a, it is a it's a world in which you know in order to and again this is kind of this sort of modern management theory has said that we need to compartmentalize we need to take things that are complex and make them simple and digestible unfortunately from an employment standpoint so that we can dumb down the employment process um, you know, a, a classic, which is sort of a weird one to, to pull up, but it came into my brain, is 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 the whole meat meat processing. Once upon a time, was a skilled trade, 
and and mm-hmm. people who yes. who worked who did that that supply chain from there's a cow to there's a steak on the table were skilled tradespeople. We dumbed that down so that we could put every little piece of that pie together as a, something we can hire someone at, at a substandard wage for and have them do yeah. that thing and only that thing and then we do that thing and only that thing at the end of the day <coughs> the steak is the table. That that's broken, completely broken by the fact that. When you don't give agency, when you don't have people who are trained to take pride and have intelligence and have a of an understanding of a process, if they're, they're, then then they're just asked to be automatons. They act like automatons, as they, they used to say in the old Soviet oh. Union. They they pretend to pay us, we pretend to work. That that's that's <laughs> wrong. That's completely <laughs> broken. And, and I'm sorry to say we're we're still living in that world and we're paying the price. Josh, what are you seeing though? How can technology break down those silos? Well, the the good news is that we can, if we choose to use technology, particularly because everything's in the cloud now, to really monitor, to understand these end-to-end processes and to really understand how they are working. Um, you know, one of the things, I mean, so I live in a university town, a lot of my friends here work for the University of California. One of the worst things you can ever have to do as a someone running a symposium or something else is, is pay a part time an, an individual to give a talk. But, you know, there, there's an honorarium. They're supposed to get paid. There's somebody from outside coming in. Um, the way it's set up now, that's six or seven different individual systems you have to go through to just get to cut that fifteen hundred dollar check. Mm-hmm. Um, technology. This, that was built as a bunch of silos because each one of those processes was was handled by a different department. The, the management structure was was compartmentalized, so the software was compartmentalized. We have the ability to to first of all just monitor each of those individual steps and understand what works and what doesn't, and then correct or self correct where the bottlenecks are. Is it there's an approval process that's broken here? We can see that. We can see that in this. In the cloud, we can understand that that's that's the point of of conflict. Let's fix that. We can find efficiencies because we can monitor an end to end process. That's a good starting point. But you know, everything about the world of work starts with people, not technology. We have to have the the will and the the management commitment to do that, and that's not necessarily not necessarily there either. That's a very hard thing to get. Uh, both because. Uh, Managements often like change just as much as anybody else. In other words, not at all. (laughs) They say, yes, we need to simplify. We need to have a great solution that will take the will of our people first. And then the next thing you you go there and say, well, you know, let's look at the process in a pragmatic way. Let's consider, as you were mentioning a moment ago, the procurement process of people or the people procurement process, which is a separate one from HR, but it still touches people. So it should be somewhat aligned. And the first reaction, oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. We have a completely different process there. We cannot do the same thing because otherwise legal situation. And well, legal, we can, we can do legal situations in a quite nice way anyway. Are you talking about contractors, Kiara? Yeah, I'm thinking contractors. Okay. But you know what? What Josh was saying applies to conference. I teach, you know, I teach also in some uh, in some university context. Next next week, I'm starting to teach a series for IHRM for their technology series, and uh, and it's the same. It's a completely separate process. And because you are a person who goes through procurement, you you feel you're almost an object. You're a box that is oh. fitted in a box and you're saying, you know, okay, fine, but it would be nice if you told me how it worked out for you. You know, I'm not asking for a full performance evaluation, but tell me how it worked out because I'd be curious. Well, I think in that regard where companies making the mistake is treating them like they are commodities and they're people. And you bring them into your company to do something of value And if they're not committed to the company, you're not going to get that value. So it all relies on how you treat that person as a person. Yeah, it's. Go ahead, Josh. I was going to say when SAP bought Fieldglass, you know, which is contingent labor, 
right. they put they put it over in the procurement side, right. not 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 in the H, HR side. And right. I had a, some fashion yeah. debates about that, including sort of the you know the point was well that's how it's done. Procurement owns that process. Does that mean that's the right place for it? Right. Procurement buys pencils. Are we pencils? If we're pencils, then fine, but we're not. Um, and and right, but we can't just be over in HR because HR doesn't procure at that, you know, doesn't do that thing either. So this is again cross pollination. And it comes down to who are they selling the product to? So if they put it in HR and they have to sell it to a CHRO, they're not going to sell it. Well, but they're yes, you know they're going to say I don't own that. There are but so many pieces of that puzzle because payroll has the same kind of discussion because payroll in the end has always belonged to finance traditionally, right? right? Yet we consider payroll part of HR, even if it's managed by finance. Now, when we talk about procurement of people, it falls out of to procurement completely, which means that HR doesn't have any visibility nor any responsibility. Right. right. But Oftentimes, that is by design, both by uh, to uh, to limit the legal complexities of uh, um, 99 versus uh, W9, because that means that they're not legally employees and they cannot be construed to be legal employees, but also because that confuses the paper of uh, what is the real cost of HR. Right. Well, Meanwhile, HR thinks it's the yeah. cost of HR, but you're still not getting down to your bottom line cost of doing business with people. Of course. And then, meanwhile, I'm running a I'm running a factory. I've got a huge order for the next holiday. We need to put some bodies on the shop floor who are qualified, who can be there, who and and who are going to be the, you know the right people for the job. I need I need to procure people. <laughs> Yep, and I'm not even. I'm not either of those departments. <coughs> I'm, I'm and manufacturing. I, I'm operations. And ideally, I will want to procure people who are who know how the company works. So I may want to consider as priority people who have an experience already with my company, even if it is as contractors or as, or as temps. And when we talk about contractors, Sherry, in the context of uh, uh, consultancy and so on, it's even more important because the second the contractors work, walk, walks out of the door, we actually see an amount of knowledge that right. disappears completely. Poof. Yep, exactly. And... Yeah, this isn't this isn't piecework. This isn't, you know, yeah. assembling a car. You know, we're trying to create knowledge products. So and even even assembling a car isn't piecework anymore. No. I mean, that, you know, the problem is, is that we are, you know, we we live in a much, much more complex society than we did 10, 15, 20, 50 years ago. And so this this idea of again, you know, this this compartmentalization of process, um it, it, Maybe when processes were simpler, I mean, you know, I look back at, you know, the whole supply chain world. Once upon a time, the only people who touched supply chain management or planning software were operations research egg, eggheads and, and a couple of, you know, three or four men or women lying around. Now, every every call center agent needs visibility into the supply chain system because they got to know where's my product? Where's my how do I deploy? And then if it's if it's large, you know, if it's a large, complex product, you may that. Call center person may need to deploy a service team to go fix it. Yes. And now we're now we're now everything starts wrapping itself around each other. And 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 if you're if you're that call center rep, you're you got to go. How do you do that? How do you manage the customer record, the asset record, the the, the service record, the you know the service personnel record, the accounting. You know, now we just that six was it six systems, seven systems. You know, that that's that's a fail. Yeah, I think we need to know more and more about less and less. But that's a book. Well, we didn't we need to know everything about something that is in the end very concentrated around the enterprise, which means that we move when you move corporation. You essentially need to relearn it, not because it's all that different, but because it has a slightly different twinge. It's like learning 
It's like going from Italian to French or to Spanish. It's the same. The rules are essentially the same. Most of the worlds are very similar. But if you try to speak without relearning it, it's a mess. Yes. That's a good example because if it's if it's something in the tech world, I can I can read right. I'm I can read French, Spanish, Italian rather well. You want to talk about the divine comedy and a hundred years of solitude? I can't read literature at that level. That's a whole different. You know, then it gets more complex. The more complex you get, you you know. The, so yeah, you have these commonalities, and then you have specificities, and that that's where again enterprise software can help us because we can do ideally both at the same time. You know, that's what SaaS, SaaS software is all about. Fit to standard. Let's get the standard processes standardized. And then, you know, I have a very specialized manufacturing shop floor. I need some really complicated skills that are not the ones that, you know, if I, and, or I've got a, you know, I've got a wind farm and I've got to get that crew to fix that turbine. I got to deploy them. I have to deploy the particular, the parts they need. I have to, you know, check to see, is this a good time to take that offline? I have to build these complexities into what should be a simple process. Let's fix something. And manage the learning system that will give the yes. employee a, visu a visibility <laughs> on how that specific piece will fit in that specific engine. Sorry, Shari, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, so, you know, in some cases, I think it's, it's very beneficial to have integrated systems. But more what I hear you saying, Josh, I think is that we have to have integrated information for those systems and we're not doing a good job at that. You gotta have both, but yeah, I mean, it starts with how do we really understand what's what the hell is going on? And I think that's, that's you know, and I, and I, and I think part of the problem is, um, you know, is, is is visibility and it's visibility into process and it's visit, you know, if if I'm a CFO and all I'm looking at is the bottom line and going, hey, we made our numbers. That's great. You know, pat myself on the back. Over here in customer support, they're going, oh my God, the customers hate us. Look at our numbers. If you're not putting the two together, then what are you doing? You know, you made your numbers, you made your finance, but if you fail that the customer's at, where are you going with the, as a company? So this blended view uh, is absolutely necessary. Now, I may be changing the topic completely or not quite, because uh, both of us, all of us have heard about business networks. Ooh, yeah. And I think That's our related. listeners might have listened, heard that. And I have some, some ideas that it may be sort of correlated to our conversation. I'd like to throw it in there for you. What do you think? Well, that's what we're really talking about, is that at the end of the day, we live, work, process, buy, sell, service in a networked economy. Um, and, and right now, I think one of the real yep. problems we have is that the network connections are all mo mostly one one to one. And so we're really trying to sort of pull these different pieces together from all over the place and try to kind of force fit an end-to-end -end process because the network itself isn't a many-to-many -many network. It's not, right. they're not, things are not interconnected. So ideally in a, in a business network, and this is a big, this is a big part of SAP's announcement at Sapphire to sort of pull that, you know, that, that moment in. Um, the, the idea is that if you are, if we are all interconnected and sharing data, to your point, Sherry, and sharing process information, we can be much, much more efficient in doing the things we want to do every day. If we need to procure people, and what we have in, in, a, as a, in a business network context is, is both you know, a connection to the contingent labor providers, maybe even the individual, individual individuals who, who might contract with us, as well as the demand side that you know, I mentioned before, that, that shop floor manager who needs some smart people on the shop floor, as well as you know, what's driving her demand, which is the CRM side, where, hey, we got this huge order coming in. If we can pull all the things together into a single network environment where we can see everything, and we can manage the process as an end-to-end process, we have huge efficiency potentials. Um, it, it's a dream, not a reality, but it's a good one. Uh, 
I don't think it's a dream. I think it's something we're attempting to do. But right now, sometimes it feels like I'm trying to put order in my spaghetti plate. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Is that a special, like, you know, from the old country uh, translation? Of a, no, uh, it's just uh, it's, Sherry knows I tend to function with household likeness. Yep. It's not, it's like not a spaghetti order. plate. It's a, um, it's a cake in the oven. And if it's not <laughs> a cake in the oven, it's uh, languages. Uh, or it's a, I'm a simple person. Yeah, <laughs> I need well, simple food, food is always a good way to get me interested in a topic. So thank can you. I yes. just, can I just back up, Josh, and ask what, what was, for those who didn't attend Sapphire, what was the key message about business networks at Sapphire? Is Business well, Network their so, platform? Yeah. So what they're doing is really pulling together a bunch of existing assets already. So that I mean, there is the Ariba procurement platform that's been for procurement, you know, the pencils and, and paper. It's been upgraded, if you will, to do more strategic supplies. So you have that as a as an as it's already a network. Thousands and thousands of suppliers and buyers are all connected together. Not, not the best user experience, but it's there. But they've also, for a number of years, had something called the Logistics uh, Business Network that helps tie logistics suppliers together. I got to ship stuff. This is where I go to do that work. They have an asset management network that I have to manage these large, complex assets. They're pulling that all together and then throwing in, throw, you know, everything, the kitchen sink. You do need to do it planning. You, you need to plan that complex network. Well, there's integrated business planning. That's a product over here. You need, you know, you, everything has an ERP system, finance system. That's S4 HANA. Uh, you need HR. Well, there you are, success factors. But the idea is that within, within the, you know, what they were saying is that we are going to support this many-to-many -many business network that's going to drive efficiency, you know, all of these end-to-end -end processes. And there's going to be something for every every role, every title, because the SAP software does pretty much cover a pretty broad universe of functionality now. Mm -hmm. So if if whether I'm you know on the finance side, on the procurement side, on the people side, uh, on the manufacturing shop floor operation side, there's something in there for me in terms of getting my job done every day. And that was that's what the, that's the flag they planted finally, you know, in this this uh, this last sapphire is we are actually committed to making this really happen and here's what it looks like. So it was kind of exciting. I've been following it for a number of years. It's something I think is, you know, could really revolutionize global commerce, literally. And SAP's pretty well positioned to do that. And now they're finally messaging it correctly. Let's put it that way. And putting product down. Very interesting. I, I think it's a very, it's a fascinating message. And I think the proof of the pudding is, and is going to be in the customer conversations that we'll conduct in the year, years to come. And even today, every conversation goes around, we need to bring in the topic in every conversation because the customer is not yet ready to bring it in themselves. Mm -hmm. So we really need to go and put it in the, in the center of the challenge, challenge the old ways of thinking. Right, and the old ways of thinking, the biggest single challenge in my view is that there is no vice president of business network. There's no single unified buying center that is a place you go to sell this. CHRO, you go sell them, go sell them that software. Go, you know, but but business network. So it, it it's got it's got because it has something for everybody. It's hard to come up with that single, yeah. you know, that single message and point of contact. It's a um, new view of the old on-premise ERP that we. Most of us know from so long ago. Three of us know. Yeah. <laughs> as young as young as we are, yes, we 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 know that. We're that. babies. We're <laughs> babies, but uh, we Listen. still we're babies with memories. That's right. <laughs> That's the best line of the day. Thank you. Baby with, <laughs> I'm work on that one. I'll have a T-shirt soon. Baby with yeah, memory. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> Well, I think that's a fascinating conversation. Thank you so much, Josh. It's, uh, I just wish, I think that's really putting, putting the business network at the center of the conversation is putting the church in the middle of the village. <laughs> Like it's that. really centering yeah. uh, yes. the conversation, anchoring the conversation when it's really important. And, and the community. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. It brings us back, you know, back to where we started. I mean, we're, we're trying to build this world of end-to-end -end process. We already do this. The point is, I think everything you do in a business network is something we try to do today. We, It's so inefficient today because of all the barriers we talked about. In theory, the network makes brings on that efficiency in a very, you know, very functional way. In theory, we, we the good news is we're still doing the same things we've always done, hopefully faster, better, cheaper. The bad news is it is going to be different and it's going to take a technology investment. It's going to take a change management investment. And that that's that's hard. It's so, hard, but you're not going to be up with your competitors. There yep. isn't yeah. one corporation in the world that can work today without technology. Right. We know that. We they can all sit, that. sit on their butts with the technology. And it's not yeah. once and done either. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. because it's continuous work. It's not, okay, we'll put in uh, Microsoft. No, it's not that. It's just yeah. a number of decisions that need to be taken and revisited regularly to make sure we stay not only up to date, but also that we get what we need to get out of it in the end. So. Right. That, that, that sets us up for the next 10 talks we can have. <laughs> okay, let's really? land those. I'm, I'm up for that. And too, next time you. I'm in California, we'll read the Divine Comedy. How about that? Oof. I would love that. I would love that, I think. <laughs> Just a little bit. Just a, yeah, a couple of little layers. That would be good. Not all 3,300 uh, chapters is really deeply... Just a little bit, and then we have a glass of wine. <laughs> we'll have a, yeah, All right, I'm in for nice the wine. <laughs> bottle of wine, I think. It'll we'll be. invite you over, Cherry. We'll have our 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 private confidant meeting. Right. Sounds awesome. Yes. yes, wine and spaghetti and great conversation. Yes. there you go. Yes. Have it. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much for having me on the show. I really thank appreciate it. Thank you so it. much for your Good time, time. and uh, well. Till soon in California. Yes, see you soon, I hope. All Bye for now. Thank you. Bye.